Hey guys, Barbara here. I hope you're having a marvelous day. Today's video is going to be a redo. I'm going to be redoing Belizean Chicken Escabeche. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. Say hello to my mother. Hi, everybody. She's not shy, okay? <laughs> I guess Mario Ramirez from... Box 11. <laughs> you are on The Bear Pantry Show <laughs> in Utah. Every Sunday, potato salad, stewed chicken, rice and beans, and plantains. You're watching The Bear Pantry Show. You're watching the Bear Pantry Show. Yeah. All sales. I'm not watching the Bear Pantry Show. Attack! You're watching the Bear Pantry Show with my sister. <laughs> I don't know why a lot of Belizean people tend to put a lot of different things in their escabeche. Sometimes they put some type of a seed that looks like allspice, some type of leaf. It might be a bay leaf or something. I don't really know what it is. For me, I try to keep it very simple. You guys know this is the Bear Pantry Kitchen, so I put very few ingredients. Take a look at what I'm going to use. Half of this chicken, I'm going to go ahead and cut it up. I'm going to use this whole onion. You can use the white skin onion too. I might end up using another onion depending on how much onion we like in it because it's only Joe and me that's going to eat it. So um, we don't need a lot. And we're going to need distilled white vinegar. This is the thing that gives it its kick. Of course, don't forget salt and black pepper. And I always start with a teaspoon of each first and then we taste it and go along. So let's get right into cutting up this chicken so that we can move over to the stove and start cooking our soup. All right, you can tell this chicken looks kind of small, but we don't need a lot of it. And you guys know as Belizean, we cut up our chicken weird. So, Joe, do you want a leg in the escalator? Mm -hmm. All right, Joe wants a leg. Do you want a thigh? Mm -hmm. All righty. Mm -hmm. I want a wing. I want the um, foot. We don't have no feet, Joe. And then this is the neck. We'll probably put the neck in there because that goes well with stews. And this is the boute, or my grandma used to call this the Parsons nose. Who knows that? That's Belizean. And I like a back. And nobody tell me about my knife skills, okay? I know they suck. We're going to take this bruised blood out of the back too, all right? This is all the gunk I don't eat. And I think I'm going to try to cut here to get a piece of the chest or the breast. So let me go ahead and cut up the rest of this. When I come back, I'm gonna have a piece of that breast so we can make our soup, all right? So this is the half that I'm not gonna use. Maybe I'll redo Belizean um, chimole or something, black soup. And this is the half that I'm gonna use for the escabeche. And I take off all the fat. You know, some other people may not do that, but for me, it just feels a little bit cleaner. And look at the breast. I always cut the breast like in three. See, that's one. This is one that I've cut in two. And then I'm gonna cut this one also in two. So we get like six pieces of breast. And that's how you do when you have a large family and you're gonna feed everybody. Nobody can get no one big piece of breast. I took out all the gunk out of here. Like I said, I'm gonna set that aside for a minute. We wanna rinse it off with some of the vinegar or if you have lemon juice or lime juice and water. Just wanna go ahead and rinse this off. And when I come back, we're gonna be adding some salt and pepper to season. The salt and pepper that I had measured out here is for the soup. So we just wanna go ahead and sprinkle some on the meat. A little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper. We're not gonna put any ricotto. Nobody's in powder ricotto. Okay, put a little bit of olive oil. If you have other oil, use that to try to do things a little bit more healthy just want to coat the bottom let me get my tongs put the meat pieces in it's not hot hot enough yet but it'll come to temperature you guys hear it and i'm only making enough for three of us to eat i think jada said she wanted some we want these to brown, and you're not going to get a lot brown because we don't have any um, ricotta or paprika on it. So let's let these get brown.
12 cups of water, which is like a, a liter and a half. And we're just gonna bring this to a boil and let this cook for about 35 minutes so that the chicken is cooked through and through. And then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients. All right guys, this is the leftovers from when I seasoned the chicken. And then we wanna add a cup of the vinegar. This is what makes this so unique and a lot of people sometimes can't get used to it. So let me stop for a minute to make sure what that tastes like. I'm gonna add some, oh, let me add the salt and pepper that I have measured out. A teaspoon of each. Don't add the onions yet until you've tasted, all right? Because the onions are sweet and it'll change the taste. So just let me bring this to a boil and then I will taste and I'll see if I need the rest of my vinegar and more salt and more pepper before we add the onions. You guys know what to do to make the pot not boil over, right? You stick something in it. I used to think it was just like a metal spoon or a metal fork, but just anything will do. Now let me go ahead and get a little bit out so I can taste. Now in hindsight, I probably shouldn't put this soup in this metal container because it's just going to retain the heat. But hey, you only live once, right? Let's see. Alright, so it needs the rest of the vinegar. So this brings it to a cup. I'm going to sprinkle a little bit more salt and also black pepper, which I didn't show here. And now time for the onion. And I've decided just to use the one onion because it's just going to be two of us eating from this pot. So you notice that the onions look... Um, the shape of when you're doing onion rings, right? That's how you slice the onions up. And we just want to like separate them in the pot because what I'm going to do is just put the lid on it and bring this to a boil for about five to eight minutes. Not too much longer because you don't want the onions to be soggy, okay? So this is served with corn tortilla. So I'm heating it up on the kamal. And while that's going on, let's serve it. Let me get a pretty yellow bowl because yellow makes you want to eat. And I use the spaghetti server thingy to get in here for what I want. So Joe wanted the thigh and he wanted the leg. Joe, do you also want the neck? Mm -hmm. Mr. Thigh and the leg is fine. Mm -hmm. So that's Joe's meat. We're going to go in here and get the onions. So that's why the spaghetti thing works well. And then you want some of the, uh, the broth. And I really wish I had a ladle. But let me go ahead and put some in here and take care of this tortilla. Then you just dip it in the soup and you just eat. And that's pretty much how you serve and eat the escabeche, okay? If you guys noticed, it was two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, and the one cup of the distilled white vinegar. I can't tell you enough parties that I've been to where people put too little of the vinegar or too much of the vinegar or they overcook the chicken so it's kind of like tough. You know, it's almost like fried dry. And it's just not tasty. So whenever people come here and they eat my escabeche, they're like, how do you get it like this? Very simply. You don't overcook the chicken and you don't put too much or too little of the vinegar, okay? So take a look at my sponsors right here. You guys make all this possible. Without you, I couldn't do it, okay? Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and also for commenting. Until I see you guys again, take care. Hey guys, if you like what you see here, you may like my vlog channel. Head on over to youtube.com forward slash dabsbeartalk to get caught up on what's going on behind the scenes of the cooking channel, what's coming up next, and what's going on in my daily life.